Welcome back to the Director's Garage. That's the sign to steal third if you're not paying attention. I am your host and resident idiot, Michael, and today we're taking a deep dive into these, the hi fi -Man H E R 9 a dynamic bass driver cannon that impressed and scared the hell out of me over their sound and construction, respectively. But first, I'm gonna start off with a little Macca. We'll do it in a headline. Now, I was at SoFi on Friday night in Los Angeles for the McCartney Got Back concert, and it was a decent show. We all know Paul struggles a bit with his voice, but my main issue was it was nearly the exact same show as when he played Dodger Stadium before the pandemic without the Ringo surprise at the end. The set list was nearly identical. It was front-loaded with new material. He told the same stories using the same visuals. There was one ad that was this moment. I can't play the audio, but John came up at the end of I've Got a Feeling. Peter Jackson gave Paul an isolated track of John singing, and it was quite a moment seeing John come up in the middle of a Paul McCartney concert and you know they did that little interplay but nearly everything down to the pyrotechnics on live and let die was identical to the Dodger Stadium set but they moved the monitors forward in front of the stage this may have been because it was SoFi and not Dodger Stadium but when Paul went back to his grand piano for let it be and maybe I'm amazed anyone not looking down that middle was screwed. You had no visual on him. You only had to watch the video screen. He did end the show with Abbey Road, part of the long one, Golden Slumbers, Carry That Weight. In the end, that was a nice surprise, but I kind of left wishing he'd taken those two years at home to reimagine the stage show. And that is your headline for today. So why the R9? Well, basically the reason I bought these were road. Uh, the road was getting crazy attention, and I thought I wouldn't have much to add to that conversation. But the Haifamen costs three times, two times that much, and it's only been out for like a month or two. And I mean, no one, no one was paying any attention to these things. So I put out my unboxing, and on the same day, the very same day, like two hours later, boom, Zeos drops his review. It's hysterical. How does this happen? I swear, none of us talk. <laughs> but uh, I, I saw all the hype behind the road and I just decided to go in a different direction and boom, here we are talking about the R9 today. And we're also talking about exactly where I purchased these. <laughs> and that would be Audio 46. Folks, Audio 46 is your personal audio superstore. They have the best brands, they have the best prices. They ship fast and free and at checkout, if you use the coupon code Director's Garage, all one word right there on your screen, you can knock an extra 5% off most of the items they carry. They are the best in the business right there. So we're gonna start today with ergonomics. Surprise, I think not. Well, let's get the nasty out of the way right up top. The headband and the materials, hinky is the word I used in the unboxing video and that descriptor sticks. It's hinky, it's hinklicious, it's hinktastic. It's worthy of the Hink Hall of Fame. <laughs> they come from Hinktopia. The plastic, the leather. On the website, they say this is leather, but yeah, it's leather if it comes from PVC. There is no way a lamb died in the making of this headphone. No way. Now, as for the cups, yeah, they're they're big, they're, but they're a nod, or at least a ripoff, of the old Sony MDR R10. The shape provides the R9 with a remarkably good sound stage, and we're going to talk about that when we get to sound properties, but. For the sake of ergonomics, yeah, I bang these things into the headrest on the chair all the time. And on top of this, despite their swimming pool sized cups, uh, these things don't reject much sound at all and they look a bit ridic. Now, as for the finish, well, the finish is like Bentley worthy. Uh, the paint job on these things is crazy good. It's a deep, deep gloss. So much so that I use this Smitty's glass wax, link in the description. <laughs> it's so cheap. but. Uh, I use that to polish these things, and it's amazing stuff. 
uh, I used it on these cups before I shot the B-roll and I set the bottle down on the desktop. And if you pause the video, you can actually see the reflection of old Smitty here in the front face of the headphone. It's, it, it kind of like made me cringe when I saw it, but I'm calling it an Easter egg and laughing it off. Now, I will say this though, these things are fairly comfortable. The clamp pressure is really good without digging in. They're super light but they do get a bit toasty over time. Your ears get a little bit warm. You still have to deal with this build too. I mean, th this really is just terrible. So it's a mixed bag on the Ergos. Now, before we start breaking down the sound, the R9 has a party trick worthy of investigation. And that's this guy right here. Looks like a ninja throwing star or something. Yeah. This little crescent shaped thing you see is a Bluetooth receiver and it goes in the left cup like that. Now, you click once to turn it on, you double click and it enters pairing. It came right up on my SP-1000 and boom, it was paired. Now, the pairing message that this thing sends out is quite loud, so keep these things off your head until you're ready to play music, but it really is that easy. Now, Bluetoothin comes at a hefty price, about 150 bucks for this little guy. And there is one other cost. <laughs> quality the quality folks the sound quality falls off significantly under bluetooth the sound stage is much narrower and there's much less three-dimensional stuff happening you know the detail takes a massive hit here's an example talking heads stop making sense now the record is pretty good but it sounds sterile to me compared to the actual movie they took the movie performances and added overdubs and tweaking back in the studio to improve the recordings but they didn't improve anything the movie itself is better in every way it's a better mix with better imaging and terrific dynamics so I ripped the soundtrack off of the movie for the sake of testing stuff, something only a resident idiot would think to do. <laughs> Back under the R9, uh, under Bluetooth, I sensed the loss of detail right away, but otherwise nothing stood out as necessarily bad. But then I pulled this out and I changed it over to the cord and it's a different headphone. Uh, the sound stage, much, much wider. David's guitar moves across the sound stage with better precision. And best of all, the cable introduces detail all over the place that you just don't get out of this Bluetooth module. So I I like having no wires, and but I'll tell you that I'm a detail whore. And though this makes your life easier, I'm going to tell you to pass on this Bluetooth module unless you really need it. It's nice to have, but the quality hit is significance. Save your money. Time to start breaking down the sound of this R9, which we're going to do under the wire only because uh, there's simply no point in discussing this Bluetooth situation any further. And I'm going to start with sound stage because the only close back I've heard that does a better job at sound stage is the Sennheiser HD 8. Now, the Senny does its own thing with the soundstage. It's really cool, but unique to the Senny. The Senny sort of rearranges the space a little bit. It's got no basis in anything you'll ever hear anywhere else. Stuff comes in and out from all over the place, and I think it's why many reviewers hate the A20, but on the R9, you get this wide soundstage that sounds like a moderate wide open back. Damn good soundstage. And being that this is a closed back, yeah, it's super good. Now, normally a soundstage like the R9 would come at the sacrifice of image, but that's not the case here. The image is surprisingly precise. I would say that this is more of a soundstage headphone than an imaging headphone, but there is a good image on these. Instruments and vocals come from specific places around your head. It's not like top tier, but it's reasonably locked in position, especially for a $600 headphone. Now next up are dynamics, and the dynamics on this headphone are quite good. It is, after all, a dynamic driver headphone, and like most dynamic drivers, it delivers a great punch when the music gets really loud. In fact, there is a ton of slam here, but there is a hitch. Not so fast. And that's literally what I would say about the R9. 
not so fast, as in, these are a bit on the slow side. I get no sense of, like, the bleeding edge of the wave. Now, granted, my frame of reference is planers and electrostatics, and they have mind-blowing speed, but not so much here. At the same time, the clarity is there, and that doesn't quite make sense to me. How can something that's on the slower side have great clarity? But, And it's not a world-leading clarity, but there's just a nice sense of precision with the R9. It's reasonably detailed, especially for a headphone that kind of seems like it lacks a little bit of speed. All right, time to get into sound structure. <laughs> That means we're going to be talking about treble and mids and bass. But you know I'm mixing that shit up. And we're going to start with the bass. And here's what I think. Imagine, if you will, every other headphone Hi-Fi Man has ever produced that has lacked slam and bass impact. Think about Hi-Fi Man taking the bass and the slam they left out of all their other headphones they've ever made and they put it on a shelf. <laughs> They, they stored it there in a warehouse and forgot about it for like a decade. They left it there to accumulate for years like interest. And then someone designing the R9 is on their lunch break and they're walking through the warehouse and they see these boxes and they said, hey, we have all this slam left over from all our other builds. Let's throw it all in the new one. That's what this sounds like. It sounds like every bit of impact and bass slam you ever wanted in all the other hi femins was suddenly overcompensated in one single headphone, the R9. There is so much bass here that Fostex listened to these and they filed for chapter 11. Sorry folks, there's nowhere else to dig for more bass. hi Femin cleared out all of the bass mines all over the planet to produce these. There's no more bass left for anybody else. Okay, back in reality land, yeah, there is some bloom with the bass. It does lack a little bit of control, but it's robust. And, it, and it's easily the best feature of this headphone. Now the mids are recessed. Uh, it's a deep V tuning for sure. I think too recessed for my preference. And that's surprising because I usually like the V. Not in this case, a little too much. I would like a little more boost here. It's not a perfect tuning. I can hear a few dips across the mids in some places and it adds some coloration that I could do without. But I wouldn't call the mids bad either. It's just they lack some richness. It's all a bit unnatural. The treble, though, is a surprise on the R9. These things really stay away from anything bright. There's a beautiful sparkle here that kind of took me by surprise. The, the music section, we're going to describe this with greater detail. So I'm going to lead off the music section with a classic dark side. The prog rock Pink Floyd masterpiece that someone keeps buying for some reason. It's been on the album charts forever. Time. You have the clocks with their brightness and attack at the top. This headphone though, it tunes out that brightness, but not the clarity. You get all of that clarity. And then, whoom, <laughs> the bass hits with the synth and Roger Waters on the bass. On this headphone, it will rattle your molars. It's an experience. There's no denying it. It will shake you to the core. This headphone presents tremendous emotion. You feel the music and it's a great ride. After hearing this pairing, I had a pretty good sense that time must have been a test track they used when they were building this thing. Now next up is Macy Gray Stripped. Now I chose this one because it shows off how expansive this headphone sounds. And it's impressive. Stuff echoes deep off to the sides. And it's a binaural recording by Chesky. But it also shows off those recessed mids. And the result is that Macy sounds like a tiny little pea on this super huge stage. It's actually kind of funny the way the R9 stages this album. And it's worth a giggle if you happen to have a pair of these. But the bass, wow. String bass is super rich, but it's really bloomy. Not the best. Again, though, we still get that great image coming through. So I'm kind of hot and cold on Macy. Now I'm going to finish the music section with Wilco and Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, the experimental 90s alt-rock album. There is a lot going on with this record, and on the R9, 
it's a delight. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Sound effects are all over the place, in close, far away, left, right, center, all of it. It's great. It's not reference listening by any means, but man, it's a fun ride, and it gave me a tremendous smile on my face. Go check out Wilco. If I had to use one word to describe the R9, the term that really resonates with me is compelling. Uh, the R9 isn't going to give you a new window into your favorite music. It's not going to get you out in track seeking. But if you're like working late on your computer, say, or you're kicking around your office and you want a pair of headphones on to listen to some music, the soundstage, the image, the smooth presentation, the clarity, and all that bass makes this an enjoyable headphone experience. It really does slip into that old Fostex THX-00 space, particularly the Purple Heart version with its magnificent bass response. It goes right where that headphone used to occupy. It's about as far from reference as you're ever gonna find, but they're really enjoyable. And this is a buy for me at 600 bucks. The Bluetooth version is a harder sell. Yes, you're getting the convenience for this little dude, but you're giving up a lot of fidelity and you're paying a lot more for a lesser sound quality. So what's the negative here? Well, aside from the build, which I've harped on enough, this is what kept popping into my head as I did the sound check. It's really a poor man's Meze lyric. It's priced at exactly what the Meze should be priced at, mind you, but the lyric really does outperform the R9, and the lyric has the fit and finish I wish the R9 had. The lyric has the fun bass, but with greater detail. It's also got a better sorted mid-range, and it's got better speed than the R9. But the lyric is insanely overpriced at 2000 bucks. Now, if you can handle the wonky ergonomics, the R9 is a good headphone, and it bests the lyric in areas like soundstage and image. But a used lyric to me is a better deal but it's gonna be a few months before the Lyric price drops on the resale market down to around a thousand bucks. Right now, the buy-in for me is sitting at about 1,400, not worth it. Now, one last point, because I can already hear the enthusiast saying, I'm omitting the obvious. What about the Odyssey LCD XC? <laughs> but the XC is a completely different headphone, to me anyway. It offers an entirely different experience. The XC is like a top-grade audiophile headphone. It's heavy, it's chunky, it's faster than both the R9 and the Lyric. It's a little less fun down low, but not by much, and there's a lot more detail all over the spectrum. It's apples to oranges, really. If you're considering the XC, then you're not, or you shouldn't be considering the Lyric or the R9. And if you're considering the R9, then the XC is not gonna be for you, but the Lyric might be. Now, next up, oh baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be unboxing maybe the most expensive thing I've ever brought to the director's garage. And no matter what you guess, you're going to be wrong. I promise you. This is way out of left field. You're never going to get it. But it's something I've been waiting to show you for like five months. And I think it's going to leave you a little bit, you know, the, the chin on the floor thing. So please get psyched. I'm psyched. It's the next step in my audio evolution and I cannot wait to share it with you. Uh, so now, with that my friends, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to subscribe. <laughs> Click that little subscribe button so that you don't miss that episode. It's gonna be a must see. And that my friends is a tease. Now I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day here. I always wanna take some time out to thank you all. It means a lot to me. I appreciate you guys so much. Give this episode a thumbs up if you enjoyed our deep dive into the hi and HE R9. Yes. Or you can do the other thing if you think I've completely lost it. Get out. Either way, I'm gonna see you before you know it.